This is real good content. We should actually just drop this. I don't give a Yo, this one's for you. You know who you are. Pandemic love. You know, it's cold in the winter time. It's a pretty scary time. I'm sure we can agree. Ooh. And the whole world can't wait to return to normalcy. But there's one thing I don't hate. Yeah, I'll admit it's true. That it's really not so bad. Mm. Being quarantined with you. Mm. <laughs> We have too much toilet paper and not enough to eat. We overwash our hands and underwash our feet. Watch Netflix and play board games. Cause there's not much else to do. Yeah, it's really not so bad. Being quarantined with you. Wow, okay. Yo, they, they got some songs, man. I, I'm actually going to go to the, when they come to the dunk later on in February. They're very good groups. There's brother, sister combo with a bunch of different artists in there. So come on, all you Americans. I know you can't be lazy if you try. Mmm. <laughs> Oh no, they didn't, child. <laughs> oh no, they didn't. So we'll put all our finest sweatpants and we'll microwave oh, pen time. For the first time doing nothing could really save some lives. So come on, all you Americans. I know you can be lazy if you try. Oh my god. There are doctors, there are nurses working every day. And they are the real heroes. I think that's fair to say. Happy Valentine's Day, y'all. It's their courage and your Happy Valentine's Day. Happy Valentine's Day. That helped me make it through. Listen, listen. To all of y'all out there, man. Yo, it's really not so bad. It's not. Hey. Yo, it's really not so bad. It's really not so bad. Quarantined with you. Wow. Hey. Watch out now. <laughs> Oh my god. with me love I'm a king for no change when I'm making love to you. Happy Valentine's Day, y'all. Hey, oh my god. Do it tonight, baby. How do I want to give my two right? Hey, like my Watch me go Baby girl, I don't want to give my Damn. That's not a do rag. I'm just gonna take us through. I'm just gonna take us through. I'm just gonna take us through. I'm just gonna take us right now. Oh, are you in love with this? It's Valentine's Day. I'm in love with this playlist. Let's go. I may be my whole time. Can I hit the make you with the If you leave me a good time, I said, You are lucky, I'm such a little bit of a five. Man, happy Valentine. Happy Valentine's Day. I'm a good job. You're a good job. You're a good job. You're a good DJ Cupid. Oh, oh, <laughs> DJ oh. Cupid. <laughs> 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 
gave you that playlist so y'all can play all night with this. Yo, I'm yo, I'm in, I'm in my bag right now. What? I'm in my bag. Where are you? <laughs> hold on, hold on. Oh my god. Yo. Yo. Yo, we do okay. it's Valentine's Day, man. We this need some music. Serious. This is serious. serious. Just need a little bit of music, y'all. Just yo, just just mm. I want y'all to just vibe with me real quick. Just vibe with me. It's Valentine's Day. And you know who you are. This ain't the time for the New York hip hop. Nah, you not gotta today. Slow it down. Appreciate the love. Appreciate the love. Right here, right here, right here. Talk to him. Sometimes I wish you knew. Ooh. But I disguise the truth. Why? I say I'm happy, but I'm so stuck on us. Mm -mm -mm. Does your mind play this game too? Woo! Think about me and you. Uh. I guess I'll just pretend until it all makes sense. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. See you face to face. I'm thinking about the days we used to be. Damn. But I can't make a scene. But I can't make it seem. Oh my God. See you face to face. I'm thinking about the days we used to be. Oh my God. But I can't make a scene. Don't make a scene. Don't make a scene, baby. But I can't make it seem. Like I can't be one. You. Even if it's true. Even if it's true, I guess it's overdue. Man, tell me your point of view. Tell me, am I to blame? You're so good. I mean, y'all want one more? One more? Hit him with one more. Hit him with one more. Hold on, just one more. Just right here. Yeah, this joint. Yo, now this joint. Yeah, this right here, though. This division. Just let this rock. Let it rock. Let it rock. Let it rock. Let that marinate for a second. Hold up, right here, right here. Let me start by saying sorry. Some days I take your time for granted. You could be the star in my universe. If I just took time. Oh my god. Tell me secrets you ain't wanna. Woo! Uh, trust is big for you. That's why I'm keeping it a hundred. Oh, this man is going in. in. Bullshit in common just keeps us apart. When we should be starting to keep our promise. Ladies and gentlemen, we could be promising. Oh my goodness, this is him. Closed up. Is he unleashed? Oh my god, let's open up and take our clothes off. I don't want nothing in between us. Woo! Ah! Nothing there to stop the feeling. Yeah, we sending y'all. That's it. You got you got some Masiko on there for us? Man. You got some Masiko on Woo! there for me? You, you, you got to end it with that Masiko. Hold on. Hold on, man. Got me thinking this might be love. This is the last one. We're gonna close it out with okay. this. Uh, uh, uh. Usually don't do music for this long, but man, it's Valentine's Day. You gotta feel and this. We're doing this for y'all. You got to this feel this. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna I'm not gonna lie. 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 I'm not gonna
But now I can change, bro. I saw you do it. I know I can make you wait. When I wake up, I'm alone, alone, alone. I just break out my phone, alone. I'm thinking I can make this baby so. I'm gonna get it, but I'm gonna get it. Oh, my goodness. I'm gonna get it. 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 I'm gonna
Well, not yet. That's really it. Not yet. Not yet. Not yet. Now, let's say there's somebody who has an expensive taste. Yo. We'll pay for the food, but just know that we'll leave you in the spot. <laughs> <laughs> You're not getting a ride home. You're not getting a ride home with us. <laughs> oh, my goodness. I, if you heard me, I said I'll pay for your food. I copy. G- gas and copy. transportation will not be provided. <laughs> copy. Um, copy, copy, copy. All right, bet, bet. <laughs> Um, so I'm glad, I'm glad y'all, y'all are good. I'm looking forward to seeing y'all do, you know, just keep, keep it going. And I'm also looking forward to going over there. I still got to figure out where we're going to go eat. Cause I don't know if y'all got allergies that I can leverage. Um, <laughs> so this man's trying to kill us before we hit it big. So he can no. take our idea. I see where you're coming from and I raise you one. <laughs> we're going to find your allergies nah, man, and you're going to be listening next week I to the to, through the chew review podcast. I get to come on, man. That's why I get to pick the places, <laughs> uh, but going through these topic lists, honestly, I'm yo, it was, I always say, uh, cause I was actually talking to, uh, good brother Dre about this. Mm. Early, I was like, yo, literally as soon as I pick a, as soon as I figure out who's going to be my guest, it seems like the topics list just kind of writes itself. Yeah. And the shit just kind of comes together as like, what would fit my conversation with this one person? Mm. And that's kind of what's happened today. Like, that's yes. really where we're at. Yeah. Uh, so first, first things first, uh, let's get right into the Super Bowl. Okay. Let's get right let's into it. Uh, as you're watching this, the Super Bowl was yesterday. I gave my prediction last week of like, yo, I think it's gonna be. I think the Rams are gonna take it. I think since he's gonna, yeah. You know why? I just I love the story of Joe Burrow and the Bengals. I mean, this is a team that won what four games last year? Yeah, four or five games. He got hurt last year. Yeah. He's probably gonna be rookie of the year last year. I, yeah, well, I think so. I think so because he had them what four and one. Four and two or something like that. Yeah. They were competing. And for the Bengals to compete, that's like me getting a date. That don't happen very often. Mm-hmm. So when it does, you got to make some noise about it. Hey, yo, la- <laughs> ladies watching this, yo, hit up my man. Right? Listen, take good care listen, of you. ladies. Good, good Christian man. I'm an honest man with an honest living. And I got a 401k. Like, yo. What it's you- a good 401k. It's a pretty <laughs> solid deal like, if you ask me. Come on. You know, uh, do you do Super Bowl parties? What's your so? Are you, you like? I've gone to a couple. I've gone to a couple, but my biggest thing with it, and now this is the food review coming out. Uh huh. If you don't go early, yeah, you don't get the good food, right? And now you have to like compact it. Like if you get bad food with a bad game, yeah. Now you're kind of stuck. I I will say one hundred percent. I think you know what it is. It isn't that you don't get – it's not that the food isn't good when you, if you get there late. It's, that the, like, it's not that it's good. It's good food that's gone bad gone, because yeah. it's been out. It's been out. It's, it's been, been out. out. Like, yeah. I've, I think I've only ever been to one Super Bowl party where they had, like, Bunsen burners going and, like, Listen, the shit was, the, like, still warm but, later but, on. And those are the, those are the MVPs yeah. of a Super Bowl party. Don't the get ones that credit. do that, they don't get enough credit, all Yo. right? Because if, if it's a solid game – the food doesn't have to be if the if the game is an eight. I'm trying f- to eat at halftime again. And you're trying like, to eat at half. Well, not this halftime because this halftime is supposed to be really good. Oh yeah, no, no. This halftime show is going to be great. It's supposed to be the greatest halftime show. So, of time. so you, let's say we have a great game and a great Super Bowl halftime show and commercials are popping. And po- then the food don't have to be that great because your yeah. attention will be away. But if you don't have good food yeah. and it's a bad game, done. It's quiet. Done. Game. Then there's no point. Yeah, yeah. Then I'd rather just watch at home. Uh, what are your thoughts about like the Super Bowl parties where they just get like a couple boxes of pizza, like on some like? See, see now that I think you're just you're disrespecting the game. Yo, you're disrespecting the game. I don't know that like if all you're gonna have is some like like Little Caesars pizzas uh, for for a Super Bowl. If like I, you, like you gotta have some wings. You gotta have some more stuff. If, if I walk in to a place and it's a, supposed to be a Super Bowl party, 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 and I will say again, the, 
is specifically saying it's a Super Bowl party. That's a di- that's, that, different, that's different. That's, that's different than like, yo, pull up. It's we like, yo, it's we, just we us. got a couple friends here. Like, that's yo, not a party. That's different. That's, that's different. Not, that's then not a party. Little Caesars is is it's cool. allowed. It's, it's cool allowed because yeah, is yeah. you, you just kicking it? But if you telling me three weeks in advance, yeah, like you're inviting me, yeah, and you're like, yo, so your Super Bowl soiree, and all you got is some like box, like, hmm. and all you got is some like. Couple boxes of pizza, yeah. No, nah. and, and like, it, that that and to me wings. Like, nah, you better nah, like you better have nah. chef some shit up. Do you want me coming? And the thing is, Pause. It's... <laughs> so glad he caught that one. <laughs> hey yo, so glad he yo, caught yo, that. Hey, Espe- I... Especially on the Valentine's episode. Yeah, Ooh. that was wild. That was wild. That was listen, a wild. One. Listen, ladies, nine months from now, nah, if you don't have that no. Super Bowl wings. That was a wild. That was a wild. That was a wild one. <laughs> Uh, what are we even talking about? What are we even talking about? Yeah, man. man. It's like, I just, I have just different expectations of being invited to a Super Bowl party. Oh, you know what? And you should, because you can watch the game at home, order your own food, and that's it. Yeah. So when you go out, there's an expectation that the level of food will be better than what you could have gotten at home. Yes. That's, that's fit. I think that's a fair expectation. Yes. So if that expectation is not met... Then, then I feel like you can you can take a dump in their toilet. It, and uh <laughs> I mean <laughs> if the just, food is bad enough, you're gonna need to. You're gonna need to. Exactly. You know? And uh maybe well, leave some dirty dishes around. Yeah. Yeah. Like I feel like there's no problem with that. Well, because again, it's like, yo, if you yeah, you gotta have like some bomb food, get the pa- get get the get the um the paper plates that I'm gonna throw out at the end of it all. Like uh, listen. If the paper, it's the same rule as I think of with a barbecue. Yes. If the paper plate can't bend because the food ain't good enough that you're piling it on, yeah, then the food ain't there. It's not. It's there. not there. You know. Um. Yeah. No, it's not there, and it needs to be there. It has to be it for the Super Bowl. It has to be. Yes. Because that's an event. Yeah. You know exactly. Like you can't you can't skimp on that. That Mm-mm. just doesn't work. So, um, speaking of events and in football and all that. Uh, we got the Pro Bowl Ugh. last week. Ugh. Yo, Ugh. was that not the worst piece of shit you've ever seen in listen, your life? Listen, I am a diehard football fan. All right, i i left I left my my friend's house to go. He was watching the Pro Bowl. I was like, yeah, I'm not watching. Drove home, watched a highlight. Said to myself, not worth it. Watch New Girl. Watch three episodes of New Girl. Yo, fam. Was better off watching New Girl than football. I And I didn't realize that they were doing, like, a whole weekend worth of events. Like, it was, like it's the fucking NBA All-Star weekend. But none of them met expectation, man. They because, were just not good. Because they didn't make sense. Like, like... I'm watching... I'm watching the, uh, 40 man... The fastest 40, right? Fam. And, and I'm like, all right... Do you really think Tyreek Hill is gonna bust his ass on the in the forty? Now Michael Parsons won, and that's great. That's great. A linebacker won. Ain't no way in God's green earth are you trying to convince me that Michael Parsons is faster than Tyreek. Thank Hill. you. It's so not so, a thing. so for people who are like, "Yo, Michael Parsons ran a faster forty, no. I'm like, you know what? See them on the field. Yo, what? Yo, just do the eyeball test. That's it. Just watch look, them. Look at Micah Parsons. He looks like he looks like he ate three versions of me. Yo, all right? Sam, look at Tyreek Hill giving a peace sign to someone who's ahead who's of him. Who's ahead of him? Are you kidding me? Like, yo, like he gave him the peace sign, like, yo, I know you about five yards ahead of me. I'm about I'm to dust burn you. you. I'm going to burn I'm you. I'm about to dust you nah, a lot. No. And your family's it. watching because it's the playoffs. Not having it. Not having it. Nothing that the NFL does can make the Pro Bowl or the Pro Bowl weekend exciting unless, unless they do a couple things, which are, one, make the Pro Bowl flag football. Because you already can't tackle, right? Oh, you just won't tackle. Oh, you won't tackle. And I get it. These guys got contracts. They don't want to get hurt. I get that. But if you make it flag football, at least I'll watch it. Mm -hmm. At least I'll watch that. Two, make it seven on seven. The same way they do seven on seven for the high school Mm -hmm. uh, recruits and stuff, make it seven on seven. Because now I'm more willing to watch that, right? Three, 
make the linemen versus defensive linemen go for passes and defend them. Do you know how entertaining that would be to watch 325 pounds, six foot four guys going out for passes? Yo, that'd be wild. Like that, that I would watch. You, you know? know, honestly, what I think the easiest way that you can fix the Pro Bowl, uh, put it after the Super Bowl again. It you remember the Pro Bowl used to be the week after, after the, Super the Super Bowl. Bowl, yeah. So it used to be that the team, like the teams who played in the Super Bowl, would then be in the Pro Bowl the following week if they wanted to. That's true. And the last time they did it, and I remember, I remember it vividly. The last time they had the Pro Bowl after the Super Bowl was the year that it was the Steelers and the Cardinals. Oh. And that Pro Bowl, after the Super Bowl, Larry Fitzgerald yep. fucking was dusted done. everybody. Yes. He yep. dusted everybody because he was pissed he lost the Super Bowl. But the only issue with that, the only issue with that is you're giving them, you're giving the rest of those guys an extra two weeks. Before the Pro Bowl, so like, if let's say you lose in the NFC Championship game, yeah, right, you have two weeks now to say, man, I don't want to do the Pro Bowl, Ooh. and that's it, you then, know, then like don't do it. But, but so like, there's got to be incentives to make these guys go to the Pro Bowl. I mean, you know? I don't know that you'll ever like be able to really incentivize it unless there's something at stake, like what baseball does. But I mean, I think with the Pro Bowl, if you put it after the Super Bowl. A, fan, more fans will watch it True. because there's, there's more and more chance for football. Well, be, yeah, this is like our last chance of football. Yeah. It's like we're gonna get one more, one yeah. more thing. Which again, I understand why the Super Bowl is the last football game of the year. I you want to make, it. yeah, you want to end with the I bang get it, and stuff. But like, yo, just like it makes the Pro Bowl meaningless, and I think like it's literally. Like, the most meaningless all-star game of all the very, major sports. Very true. Very true. Of all major sports. But you got to find a way to incentivize it, I think, just so you'll get those big names who have who may have a minor injury to at least show up, show their face there. Yeah. You know? You don't want every year Aaron Rodgers to get, uh, to get picked for the Pro Bowl and he's out because he has a minor toe injury. Like, yeah. dude, you just showing up there and plus – they, the NFL charges full prices for this. Yeah. So people are paying full, full blown prices. Yeah. To watch a glorified tag football. Yeah. Two hand touch. Really? It's it's pretty bad. It's out there. bad. Like I, there's um, just no way around it, man. You. You did mention all of the you know the big names that are in the Pro Bowl, and that's kind of like the beauty of the Pro Bowl. I think that's a perfect segue. To a very big name who was in the Pro Bowl, Alvin Kamara. My namesake. Yeah. Yeah. Alvin Kamara. No relation. No. Uh, <laughs> Unfortunately not, because I'd be asking for some money. <laughs> I, I, man. I mean, he might need money now, because yeah, he, he might need, need all this bail money. <laughs> all right. So, Alvin Kamara. Uh, the night before the Pro Bowl, mm. there was yeah. an incident. An incident in an iClub. Uh, the Pro Bowl was it? Where was the Pro Bowl? It was Vegas. In Vegas. Yeah. Of course. So, in a Las Vegas nightclub where nothing good happens, um, yeah. <laughs> there was an assault of absurd magnitude. Huh. Uh, it's like the baby was there or something. Yo, like you. <laughs> <laughs> so, you would have thought it was a baby. You would have thought it was a baby listening party. <laughs> like, <laughs> shit. <laughs> Yo. Oh, my God. Uh. <laughs> Man, <laughs> I'm not potting today. <laughs> I'm good. I might be good, yo. Like, <laughs> if this is what we are, <laughs> you might got me fucked up. Uh, so it just so happened that the culprit for aforementioned assault was named to allegedly be Alvin Kamara. Yeah. And whilst authorities were looking to locate Alvin Kamara, they found Alvin Kamara by tuning into their local <laughs> NBC station <laughs> and seeing aforementioned Alvin Kamara on the fucking Pro Bowl. Can, can you imagine? Can you imagine that? You're just like, well, well, deputy, we lost him. We can't find him. We can't find him anywhere. We can't find Alvin Kamara to save our lives, sir. Hey, it's okay. Let's relax and watch the game. 
<laughs> touchdown, Alvin Kamara from the New Orleans Saints, who's right here. Yes. At, <laughs> who just so happens to be. <laughs> Sheriff, go get your coat. <laughs> Yo. And then and they, they probably waited until the end of the game, too. Which is honorable. <laughs> which is honorable. So, yo, we, we we don't want to cause a scene. They probably bet money on it. They were like, <laughs> I bet yo. you that Alvin Kamara is going to probably get away with another touchdown. Yo. But you know what he's not getting away with? <laughs> yeah, yo, this assault. <laughs> so, Alvin, Amer- Alvin Kamara was promptly arrested, yep. apprehended, if yeah. you will, Yeah. <laughs> after the Pro Bowl. Uh, and according to what I've uh, read, just based on what happened, it's a possible charge of five years in prison. So, did you see the photo? I saw the photos. The All photos. Right. He is that dude's Ooh. face. Yeah, yeah. Listen for the Valentine's episode. I'm gonna put it nicely, ladies. I look better than him. So yeah, <laughs> nah, that so that, that yeah, he got he got he got dealt a heavy hand. Yeah, no, he looked like he was at a the baby meet and greet. <laughs> yo, we're uh, gonna we're gonna have a we're gonna have a baby count here, all right? Yeah, um, for this episode, yo, we're gonna have a baby count for yo, how many baby jokes we can do, all yeah, right? Yeah, yo. <laughs> but yeah, he got he got hit hard. He got messed up. But I don't think he will get any jail time because if you if they said they said he could serve up to five years. Right? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. You got to think he'll be able. He'll probably get the best lawyers, all right? Of course. It was him and three other people, I think. Three or four of the people that were involved with this. Yeah. Something like that. Yeah. I guarantee you one of those other people will probably serve some jail time. That's definite. Do you think, though, uh, do you think, well, first off, do you think he ends up getting released if he hasn't already? So, no. By the time this no, he won't get released. He so won't get released. he'll just be able to just keep playing... He, he's going to so, Ray Lewis this so, whole thing? So, no, he won't Ray Lewis the whole thing. But they do have the exempt list. So he'll he'll probably be on the exempt list to start the season if this carries on yeah. into the into the new year and everything. The commissioner will probably put him on the exempt list. Okay. Which means he'll still be able to get paid, but he won't be able to do any football activities with the, with, uh, associated with the Saints. Okay. So he'll do that. He'll do the, the whole court proceedings and stuff like that. See what happens with that. If he gets charged with anything... Formally charged, he has to go to yeah, yeah. to trial and everything like that. Then I could see them saying, "Stay away. You're still on the exempt list. We don't want you around until everything's done." Almost like the the whole Deshaun uh, Deshaun Watson thing. Yes, he was on the exempt list all year. He got paid. Yeah, he just had no affiliation with the Houston Texans. Yeah, same thing. I think this will get done a lot faster though because the NFL looks at this charge as a slap on the wrist. As in terms of domestic violence, that's a whole other issue. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. No, that you gets know, treated way differently. That gets treated way di- um, way differently by the NFL. I mean, look at Kareem Hunt. Um, that very true. Yeah, so very true. it's it's definitely different. Um, I also think that just Alvin Alvin Kamara is like a good enough. Football. It's he's it's, talented. He's, he's talented. talented. Like they you gonna, know they're gonna let him rock. And you got to think with the way the league is going right now, talent beats. Any charge, on um, to a certain extent. Well, again, I think it's as long as it, as long as I think the two things that the NFL will always like. Everything is a slap in the wrist unless it's violence against women or violence against animals. True. Everything else is a slap in the wrist. Yeah, yeah. And sorry to say this, but those slave owners, they know they know how to they know where their money's at. Yeah, and they and they, yeah, so they go they gonna do what they gotta do. So, um. Sticking on the topic of football, mm. this was actually something that my brother, uh, shout out to my brother Martin, he was like, yo, I saw this post, I want you to talk about it on your pod. Okay. I said, okay, lay it on me. He, he asked me, uh, is Tom Brady a Hall of Famer? Let that, let that one come in. Okay. Right. Yeah. This is the post. This is what the post said. Not not his views. All right. He's like, I read. I saw, this is the post. I want to hear what are your thoughts on it. Like talk about it on the pod. Mm-hmm. So is Tom Brady a Hall of Famer? I'm like, oh, okay. Like I don't, I don't know where we're going with this. Yeah. 
And then he brought up two very important caveats to consider when, when saying this. Spygate, Barry Bonds. All right. As far as, so again, it's more so like Tom Brady having like the cheating accusations and what happened to Barry Bonds in baseball. So, he is a Hall of Famer. Without, with, well, no, with, that, but that's with, not the. But that's again, you you see where you see now where no, I'm no, taking no, no, no. I, I see where you're taking it, and the reason why you can easily come. I I I think you can easily combat that is because I look at Tom Brady's career in three phases. I look at it before they allowed him to be the record-breaking quarterback. Yep. Where he won three. Yep. There was no denying that he was an above average game managing quarterback. Yeah, he was right? I, I think I put him in the like what I always say, it's the I'm not gonna lose you the game quarterback. Exactly. Still got three rings. Yeah. In that phase. Yes. Spygate, right? Did he win a championship that year with Spygate? Um, I, I can't remember. Cause I, I just know, I know that it was the year that I think it was like them up against the, well, no, no. Cause there's, cause there's spy gate and then there's also deflate gate. There's all these all right. gates. So yeah, well, you know, some, someone got to drive. So let's open up the gates. There's uh, a lot of gates. You got spy gate, spy gate. Was that really his fault? I don't know who paid. I, 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 I don't know who bought the drones. You know, you know <laughs> I don't know. I don't know who. We need to these. see the books. I don't know who's. We need these. to see the books. I don't know who's behind these. I feel like with Deflategate and with Spygate, I think that's more of an effect on Belichick, on Belichick's legacy, okay. than it is on Brady's. And he won. He still won. Let's take out him winning a championship with Deflategate, right? Yep. He still has six rings, right? Spygate, because he has seven total, so let's take out the flaking six. Let's say it's yeah. six, right? He still, that's still six. He still has the record. He still has most touchdowns. Oh, yeah, no. He, he has still a, has a, passing yards, wins, as a, wins in the playoffs, wins um, Super Bowl MVPs. Like, there's so much there that you take away one or two of those things, it's still a better like record than ninety nine percent of the league. Again, but I mean that's where, but that's where, and, and I, I get it, and though. that's where the Barry Bonds thing comes into play because yo, if you took if you took Barry Bonds, if you turned all of Barry Bonds' home runs and turned them into outs, he would have a better on play. He would have, still have a better on uh, on base percentage than David Ortiz career wise. Like okay. his numbers yeah. were like. Astronomically disgusting to consider. So, I do. I think Barry Bonds deserves to be in the hall. Oh, of course. Yes. Now, I'll be honest, and I'm gonna, I'm just gonna go out on the ledge right now and just say this: anyone who doesn't believe that Barry Bonds does, anyone who believes that Barry Bonds doesn't deserve to be in the Hall of Fame, uh, please notify me. Notify me, and we will fight. Notify, like, let me know. Yo, I don't think he should be in the Hall of Fame. Ah, right, yo, two thirty by the flagpole. I'm beating your ass. <laughs> so, so the Valentine's episode has yeah. just turned into a, <laughs> it got violent. It's a very violent yeah. episode of the yo because I'm like yo, like he deserves to be in the Hall of Fame. <laughs> he does. It's a he crime, does. and I, I feel like him and Pete Rose. I said it. Pete Rose should be in the Hall of Fame. Most hits. I don't want to hear most it. hits. He should be in the Hall. He bet on a few. He games. bet on a few games. Guess what? Everybody in baseball does. It's All a right? thing. I'm sure. So uh, yeah. that's nothing. The reason why Barry Bonds belongs is because the stuff he did leading up. He's to the, never not been good. Leading up to the steroids, right? Which was. Everyone was, what, was doing it. It was three years that he was doing that he was really like the steroid juice monster, right? It was like three or four years. Whenever his right? head got bigger. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I had nothing to say on that Whenever one. his yeah. head got Whenever bigger. Whenever his head got bigger. Is really but, what, what but it was. When he, when he had a skinny head. He yeah. was doing damage. No, he was still. He was a legit yeah. three hundred twenty, like yeah. twenty home run, twenty stolen bases. Like Dude was he amazing. was, a, he, he was, was never a very good good. base. 
he should have been in the Hall of Fame. The fact that he didn't, though, I also think that the Hall, especially in baseball and football, are heavily managed by the writers. The, the NBA, you get in when you get in. Chris Bosh, Chris Bosh had a shortened career, won two championships, won one Olympic gold medal. He got into the Hall of Fame right after the five years of his oh, retirement, yeah, everything, because he deserved it, and he was he, but he was very, he deserved it. He I think deserved he deserved it. it. Maybe you know, maybe not right away, but he did deserve it. But yeah, I mean, you don't got to like he. I put him in the category as like, yo, like let's not split hairs. You know this dude goes in. Yeah, you know he goes in. Barry Bonds though, especially those last four to five years, he was atrocious with writers and reporters. They were awful. Like, he was he was bad to them, and they were bad to him. But it's yo, but right? that's where honestly, like baseball writers, they all these personal vendetta. Like, of course they do. It's, of course it's they do. It's trash, you know. And and that and but and that kind of that kind of makes the hall less credible, you know. Yeah. The same reason why is To in the Hall of Fame for football? I yeah. feel he's in the hall, right? So To, yeah. So he's. He's in the hall. If I'm not mistaken, he didn't attend. The he season. didn't attend. He's the only person he, who didn't he attend. He didn't attend because he was so he was like he was just sick and tired of the reporters. The reporters and the writers shouldn't be making up this black cloud over players. Yeah, when this is the ultimate pinnacle for players, your career is over. What's the best way for your legend to be known? 40, 50, 60 years after yeah. going into the hall. And you can't go in the hall because you told some writer, I don't want to talk today. Yeah, I don't want to talk to you. I don't want to talk to you. Like, you, got my you know, that, that's crazy to yeah. me. Yeah. So the fact that he didn't, the fact that Barry Bonds didn't get in, it just screams to me that the hall needs a change. Maybe if it, the fact that it's all writers, how about we take 30 or 40% writers? 50, like, in the rest, the 60% has to be players that are in the hall that vote. That would be fire. Because, uh, you know, nobody knows how difficult it is to get in the Hall of Fame than... Hall of Famers. So why not have Hall of Famers make that decision? Yeah. So, I mean, I definitely think... I I highly, highly doubt that any of the gates, uh, any of those, like, scandals or fiascos stop Brady from getting in the hall. Um, no. Like, I think Brady Brady was too great of a quarterback. Um, and calling a spade a spade, Brady's white. Um, so. This is this has became a very truthful episode. <laughs> <laughs> hey, man, it's the iced tea, baby. It's that 83 That iced 83 tea. iced tea is yeah. dropping. Yeah. Truth bombs. Yeah, that 83 iced tea, man. It'll do it to you. <laughs> It'll do it to you, man. Damn. It'll do it. What are, what are we even talking about? <laughs> what are we even talking about? Uh, sticking on to sports. Mm. Basketball. Uh, so, I called it on this pod. Mm -hmm. Many a time, I said, yo, this Brooklyn experiment is not going to yeah. work. Yeah. This shit is not going to work. Y'all have fun with it. Cootie, I'm, I hope you had a blast. Woo! Can I just say how much I'm loving this right now? Yo. How much I'm loving not it? not going to work. Mm. Now, lo and behold, today, at the trade deadline, uh, Westbrook was not traded. He wasn't. And I feel like that's a good thing. It is a good thing. It is. I'm not, like, not going like, to hear any of the nonsense. It's a good thing that he's still there. I, I feel like... Right now, the problem with the Lakers is, yeah, they have chemistry issues. Do I think Westbrook should be starting? No. I don't think West, Westbrook should be starting. And here's why. If you alter their their lineup just a little bit, and you have a true point guard with LeBron, who is a de facto point guard. Yeah. With Anthony Davis, right? And at the eight-minute mark, you take out LeBron, and you bring in Westbrook. You take yeah. out that true point guard and you bring in Malik Monk, who's a shooter. Yeah. Now you've got a shooter with Westbrook who can drive and kick out to AD. You got to stagger their minutes a little. Because the, the problem is the chemistry with all three of them isn't there. Well, it's because they, the, their style of ball doesn't accommodate one another. Exactly. So now, but, but if you stagger it a little yeah. bit, 
it can work and you limit the amount of time that the three of them are together. Can they be a big three? Yes. History has shown that you can have a backup uh, a bench player be part of your big three. James Harden and OKC. Manu Ginobili. Yeah. The Spurs. It can work. Yeah. And, and Manu Ginobili had a higher usage rate than Tony Parker. But, yo, but, but they just... They didn't need to be on the court at the same time until you just absolutely needed them need, all on the court. Exactly. All some like, yo, it's fourth quarter. We got to throw it all, all like, and, at and, the fan. We and, all going out. And now, then you, you, so you limit the impact, the negative impact that Westbrook would have. Yeah. And you still make him a closer, which he's capable of doing. But when you start with him and you're down 15 or 20, you're not going to be uh, – it's kind of tough to get back to yeah, it, you know? Yeah, it's very, it's very tough. And so, I think that's where that's where um, I can totally see Westbrook being, like, the leader of that second team. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. So, I mean, we'll see. I'm, I still hold out hope. I think, I think they'll get it together. I, um, I, I just don't see them having enough time to make a push to get one of the top four spots in the, in the West. Which means you'd have to go on the road in a yeah. series and go against a Utah or a Golden State or a Phoenix or a Utah. I'll be honest. I don't think seeding is as important in basketball as, as I think it's. I think it's more important than what people look at. I, I don't. Because I think the only reason why I say that, though, is because seeding only plays an effect, I think, when no matter what, in a series, worst case scenario, you'll always get an e- you'll always get like your share of home games. If you're able to defend home True. court and just steal one, and just steal one, you'll always be fine. Like that's why, like for example, I would understand the home court advantage if the format was uh th- like three games at home. Three, like you know what I'm saying? If it was like yeah, three, like like, like, a, like no, no, uh, two, the, three, the, two. The, the the two three two. If it's a two three two, I understand the yo. We gotta, we yeah, we got we have to we have to protect home court because we're going on the road. We're going for go three on the road games. For three, like yo, I understand that. But in a two two one one one, I'm like, all right, fam. Like, and and. That's why I think home court is more important in a 2-2-1-1-1. Two, two, one, one, one. Because if you protect home court for two yep. and you can steal one on the road, you're guaranteed to come back home for a third one. And now a 3-1, like you, you can have a 3-1 going back home to close the series. Yeah, but, if you know? you're the, but imagine if you're the road team. Let's say you're the Lakers. Yeah. And you're going, because mind you, again, the Lakers might be on the bottom four in the playoff seating, but compared to a lot of teams in the West, they're definitely like the the big dog. Like yo, because that's because no matter where no matter where in the seating is, that's, that's LeBron. Still, that's still LeBron. But, that's still LeBron. But I think people are less scared of the the pieces around him this year than I most years. I don't believe that anyone in their right mind. Can not be a can just like now. Nah, I'm not afraid of LeBron. I'm not hearing it. See, I refuse to hear it. I understand that, but like when you see how some of these, it it would be different if these were veteran teams, but these are young teams that are coming at them, and they don't care. Memphis, Memphis don't care. But that's but that's why like, I don't have faith in the younger team. Like I, that's why. Like again, I think uh, last year when. The Lakers lost to I think it was to Phoenix. Yeah, yeah, it had to have been to Phoenix, who's being led by Chris Paul. Chris Paul, like you need that veteran leadership to take out for LeBron James. Like True. you're not doing it as a young team because you know what happens. Because you know what? Because here's yeah. what I think happens. Okay, if you're a young team and you're going up against the the purple and gold and LeBron James, and you're and we're at your house first, the pressure's on you. You have to win both you games. Do. That's very because true. if you lose one of these games, you're getting cooked. So my counter to that: OKC, young OKC, when uh they played the Lakers on their route on their way to the championship, right? When OKC went to the championship that year, they played Miami. 
they went through Kobe Gasol, right? They went through Odom. Uh, they went through um Dallas. Yeah, yeah. Right? They, they went. They went through. They were. They, they went were, through the West. They, they went, went through, through like the West. Who was yeah, the they West. went through who was the West. And I feel like it gets to a point in time where every major superstar, a LeBron James, a Tim Duncan, a Kobe mm-hmm. Bryant, they get the, to that point where they can't carry their team without that additional help. And I don't see I, if if there was to ever be that year, this would be that year. I just who would be that OKC team then? Memphis. Me- so? Memphis. Memphis. Have, if you've seen them play, I they haven't. don't. Who's over there? Is Zach Randolph still there? <laughs> <laughs> Who's over there? <laughs> Who's over there? <laughs> who, who all over there? Mike Conley. <laughs> yeah, they still got OJ Mayo. <laughs> who is the OJ Mayo? <laughs> who is over there? <laughs> OJ Mayo. Tell me, please. All right, so, I don't know. Tell me. So, who's over there? <laughs> first off, you have. The most improved player, without question, top three MVP candidate in John Morant. Oh, hell yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. You got Jaron Jackson, who could be up for most improved player if, for some reason, John Morant gets moved to MVP conversation and doesn't get the most improved. Jaron Jackson, 18, 18 and 9 guy, without question. Yeah. Spot up big. You got Steven Adams. Who is a force down low? Just a great defender, overall great rebounder. They have great shooting around John yeah. Morant. So John Morant, the biggest question with John Morant is the same things that were were asked about Westbrook when he first started. Can he shoot enough to make a defense come out to him so then he can use his athleticism? He's already a better shooter than what Westbrook was at. The, at this Ever. point in his career. Ever, at any point, yeah. So, he already has that. He already has the weapons around him. But the biggest thing is they have an identity. They they will run you out of a building, but they're also not afraid to get gr- to get gritty and come to a grind and win a 90 to 87 game. They'll blow you out the water, 136 to 110, but they have no problem playing that slow ball. And when you can play both styles, yeah, come playoff time, when it gets physical, that's the kind of team that will be a danger to a, a Lakers team that, quite frankly, doesn't want to run. Oh, hell no. The Lakers don't want to run. Nah. The Lakers want a slow-paced game. They want to play half court. They want to play wanna, ha- yeah. yeah. Because you got street clothes Davis, who refuses to play in the post, which yeah. means your only post game will be LeBron. Yeah. A 37-year-old LeBron going against a 23-year-old Jaron Jackson, a 27-year-old Steven Adams. Hey, man. I mean, if ever I'm not dis I'm not discounting the Lakers. I'm just saying if ever there was a year, it'd that be this. It would be this year. Yeah. I mean, it's it's gonna be an interesting uh I'm interested to see like what this second half of the season holds. Uh Fills me with joy to see what's happening to the Brooklyn Nets. Oh gosh, yes. Um, oh, for those of you so who, happy. For those of you who don't know, Ben Ben Simmons has been traded to Brooklyn. What? It's, it was yeah. <laughs> it's Ben yeah. Uh, <laughs> they they traded uh, Ben Simmons along with a bunch of Philly cheesesteaks. Oh, uh, to how good Brooklyn. is a Philly cheesesteak? Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm in love with to, a Philly cheesesteak. To Brooklyn for James Harden. And yo, I'm not gonna lie. And maybe it's just because, because I'll be honest, I don't watch a lot of basketball until after football season is over. All right, that's I don't fair. watch. I don't watch a whole heck of a lot of it until after football season. That's when I really that's get when into it. That's when it ramps up too. So that's when it ramps I get up. That. That's when I get into like, it. Like I'm a diehard fan, so I watch from the opening tip nah, until. I don't. I don't. But, I don't. I'm too heavy into like just football season to like be but able to do no, both. No, no, no offense, and please don't hate me for what I'm about to say. What? You're a Jets fan, though. So, the season, so the season's done for y'all after like week six. No, nah, I watch. <laughs> I'm, I'm watching. I watch every week. I'm there. I'm there. Oh, okay. I mean, like Gary Vaynerchuk. Like I'm there. <laughs> I'm there every week. I don't care. <laughs> like I'm there to watch the Jets. Okay. I don't, I don't right. care. Okay. I mean, 
I'm I'm there. I'm regardless. You you really like the pain. Listen, nah, I'm a Knicks fan, so I know nah, about the pain. Yeah, man. All right, you know what it's like. I know, I know. Cheers, man. Yeah, you know, man. You know, you know what that the pain struggle's is like. real. <laughs> All right. Mm. It's good. Oh, that '83. Yeah, they, mm. they, yeah. Um, but so just from looking at what like their projected starting lineups are going to be mm. for both Brooklyn and uh, the Sixers. Did both of these teams get worse? So, who got better? Tell the, me who got better. The Nets got better. The Nets got better. Philly got worse. And here's why. For one, Brooklyn got Seth Curry, who's a great three-point shooter. Yes. The one thing that Durant needs around him is shooting. Yeah. That way no teams can't double up on him. So he got you got a premier three point shooter. You got Andre Drummond, who's giving you backup uh, center minutes at a very good rate. He provides defense, so you have that. You now get Ben Simmons, who yes he can't shoot. We all know that, but everything else in his game is elite. So now you have you have a premier defender. Mm -hmm. You have a premier three point shooter. You have a good backup center, mm -hmm. right? And you picked up draft picks. Well, you picked up two first round draft picks, right? So now let's say, let's say, because Harden's up for an extension, right? That James Harden contract is fucking horrible. It's a, you think it's horrible now? It's a horrible contract. His extension is horrible. You, you saw what his extension yes, is, no, right? His whole contract yeah. is horrible. He will be getting paid $62 million at the age of 38 if he signs his extension with, with the Sixers. It is right? a horrible deal. Yeah. So, $62 million when he turns 30. He's 33 now. He'll be 30. So, five years when he turns 38. Joel Embiid is only 26, I think, or tw um, either 25 or 26. Yeah, I think it's, I, yeah. So in five years, he'll still be in his prime, but towards the end of his prime, right? Between that and Harden, there's your whole salary cap. Whereas the Nets will have two first-round picks that, are all, that will come from the Sixers. So now if Harden, which has shown, he has shown, he can't win it. On his own. No, he I ain't can't no win it with talent there, right? And Bede will be wasted. Mark my words. They will not win a championship with Harden there. Nah, I, I, yo, I'm telling you, J yo, James Harden, he's, he's, he's the dribbling version of Carmelo Anthony. Yeah. Does not play defense, takes bad shots, is such an ISO guy, and the only way he gets, any sort of achievement is by scoring. He can't defend. His playmaking skills, meh at best. Meh. Because he has to dribble the clock out to get an assist. Yeah. He doesn't play in a system. He's going to ruin Embiid because Embiid's usage will go down. That's the only way Harden can get used. Yeah. Right? So all that work, working together, plus you lost draft picks. Right? Tyron Mack, they have they have this kid Maxi, a point guard there yeah, in, yeah. in Philly. Very good kid. Very good player. All right? Now his usage is gonna go down because you have hard in there. So now you lose that. The defense goes down because now instead of having premier defenders on the wing, you have Harden, which now leaves people like uh Tybo open to foul trouble. Because yep. now he's gotta guard more. You leaves Embiid open to foul trouble because now he has to protect. He has to, he might have to come out more because Harden doesn't play good defense. Whereas the Nets already have a premier defender on the wing, mm -hmm. already have premier defenders on at center. It, it'll be easier for the Nets to build with what they have right now. Plus, they got two draft picks. So when the cap goes up and it raises more, and you have to pay these guys, you still got cheap players there. So my thing about the draft picks is, and this is where I'm like, this is where I, I put it in the category of Brooklyn takes a step back mm -hmm. because what they were building towards wasn't the future. 
Oh, they no, were no, building no. towards, yo, we're trying to like win, win a now. championship. Yeah, we're trying absolutely. to win now. Once you start trading players for draft picks, you are now taking a step back from that. I agree with you in theory. The reason why I don't in this particular case is because they got a premier player that can still help their team. Do you think that they are in a better position to come out of the East? Yes. Because I feel like Harden was not going to carry them. Harden was not going to. And I feel like if you can get anything for Harden now, as opposed to him leaving in the offseason, because there was there was already rumors, and it, it, it has to be true, that he did not want to be there anymore. Oh, of course not. So if, well, he, if he didn't want to be there, you're going to lose him for nothing. Fam, I don't think, like, I'll be honest, that – the reason why I strongly felt that the Brooklyn experience experiment wasn't going to work was because of the way it was built. Yeah. When you look at every other super team, it's literally built through recruitment for motherfuckers who all want to be here. True. There are conversations. There are, like, you know what I'm saying? It's not these, like, yo, uh, Kyrie wants out of... Uh, Kyrie wants out of Cleveland because he wants to lead his own team. Yeah. Then he gets traded and he goes to, to Boston and then he leaves Boston to meet up with KD in Brooklyn and then a year later y'all trade for Harden and say, yo, wait, hold up. We ain't talk about this. Yeah. Who the <laughs> fuck? Wait, what? Wait, we, we traded for Harden? Wait, what? Wait, when the fuck did Blake Griffin get in here? Hold up. Wait, what the fuck is going on? What is all this? So like I think I think the biggest issue with Brooklyn was they like you said it was a recruitment thing also ne- none of them had showed that they could lead their own team what makes you think they were going to So so for them to put it all together and be like all right you went to the fi- you went to the conference finals you went to the conference finals you went to the conference finals if we put all three of you guys together, we might make it to the final. Like, no. No. And it I'm, doesn't show. There was, no, there was no growth from that team. There was no growth. No. Say what you want about KD going to the Warriors, right? It might have been a cheap move for KD. But for the Warriors, they knew what they were doing. Well, yeah, because they had already won. They had already won, Literally. and they had, their, they had everything in place. They had their coach in place. KD was not going to get Steve Kerr fired. No. KD wasn't going to get the GM fired. Katie wasn't getting. He wasn't going to get anyone else traded. Nope. It, it, the, Katie was going to somebody else's team. Yeah. Done. When LeBron and Bosch went to Miami, they weren't getting Spolstra fired. No. Because they weren't getting. They weren't going to Pat Riley and get him fired. No. They had their. They had themselves established. Yeah. So they had to fit into that system. When Brooklyn was building up until the KD, and a, they were building a system there. They had their coach. They had their GM. They had their players. They had won a playoff series. They were really getting there. They were developing young talent. So when they traded for – when KD went over there, they had to get rid of some of that young talent. Yeah. Then Kyrie went over. They had to get rid of more of their young talent. Then KD was like, I don't like this coach. So they got rid of the coach. Yeah. Then the GM. Oh, uh, yeah. Got rid of the GM. So now there's nothing established there. So now you're bank you're banking on Steve Nash, who was not even an assistant coach. He was a developmental player. He was a developmental player coach yeah. for the Warriors. That's a system that's already developed. Yeah. You're not there to develop a system. You're not there for... Yeah. Bro, Steve Nash, honestly, and what what I can say from just watching basketball last year, and I'm sure it hasn't changed this year, I don't know that I've ever seen Steve Nash call a play. He's called plays. It's just they don't follow it. <laughs> he doesn't, they don't follow it. Because think of, look, at, look, at it like, look at it like this, Damn. right? When did you ever see Kyrie running a set play? Where it was Kyrie brings the ball up and passes it and runs around and sets a pick for somebody. Nah, that's not. He don't do that. Nah. James Harden was was where for the last six, seven years? In Houston with D'Antonio. 
seven seconds or less offense. You telling me they run plays? No. No. One nowhere. One nowhere. The only one of them that ran plays was KD. And where did he do that? In Golden State. Uh, yeah. Where they had a set system. Well, yeah, yeah. So, so no system, no GM, a new coach. No of rings. Course it's going to work. Of course it's going to work, right? No. No, no And it doesn't. And it doesn't. And I'm glad it doesn't. And I'm glad. Oh, I, I'm loving every minute of it. I love every, every single minute of it. Of I mean, tell Cootie right mm. now. Oh, mm. Cootie. I mm. hope you're having a great Valentine's Day. Mm. Magnifique. Go Nets. Yes. Mm. Magnifique. Mm. Cheers. Mm. Cheers, mm. good sir. Mm. Mm. Ah, it's just delicious. That's delightful. It's just delicious. Mm. Um, so just to switch gears mm-hmm. for a little bit, uh, talk a little bit about video games. I don't get Ooh. too much into video games, but man, this was newsworthy to me. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, a game that's been in fucking development for like 10 years ten, now. 10 years, yeah. Uh, we're apparently getting Grand Theft Auto 6, finally. Uh, that's wild to me. That they, yo, they really went. They really did it. Yo, they honestly, shout out to Rockstar Games. Because mm. they re like. More than any other fucking company that I've ever seen in my life in video games, they really squeezed out the whole online gaming shit. As long as possible. As long as possible. They say, yo, you're not getting a new game. Yeah. We're going to put out a new DLC pack. Go play online. Go play that. And stop, play, on. and stop playing on my phone. Yeah. <laughs> and stop playing on my phone. <laughs> yo, just DLC packs nonstop. Yeah. But, I mean, the game is, is going to come out. I'm curious to see. How it's perceived by, damn, I'm gonna make myself sound old, but the younger generation, the youths, the youths, <laughs> yo, I'm I'm curious to see how they how they how they how they feel about it, because for us it'll be more nostalgic, you know. I mean, I yes, it would definitely be nostalgia for us. I also like wonder. Well, a, I do feel like it'll be very well received because I think a lot of the younger generation they play Grand Theft Auto Five. Because of all the online shit. Alright, the online stuff, yeah. It's all the online but, stuff. But will they purchase it? Will 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 it will it will it drive numbers the way everybody's thinking it will? I feel like it will. So here's my thinking. Mm. And I'm really just thinking about this current age of video games that we're in, where uh I feel like game developers are starting to really know and understand that like you don't get number like your sales aren't going to come from the initial purchase. Okay. Look at Fortnite. Yeah. That game is fucking free. It's not going to come from the initial purchase. It's going to come from you just putting out all of this stuff that you could only get if you buy. If you buy. Yeah. And you're going to get all of the people who want to buy it. And those that don't want to buy it or can't afford to buy it, well, y'all can still have fun playing the game. You just can't. You just can't do this. Yeah. Like. That's true. You know what I'm saying? Like, nah, you don't. Like, no, you you can't get the Nino Brown skin if you don't buy it. Nino Brown? Yo. Grand Theft Auto 6. If it doesn't have a fucking Nino Brown skin. That's it for you? That is, that, is, is that it for you? Bro, like. Because honestly, like I be watching, like I be watching Mason playing Fortnite. Yeah. And they have all of these different skins on there. He's just like, yeah, yo, I got this one, and yo, they got they got Boba Fett in here, daddy, <laughs> like, and all this shit. And I'm like, yo, that's fire. And then I think about like Grand Theft Auto Six coming out. And I'm just like, yo, like I better get some like dope thugging ass skins, like, <laughs> yeah, like yo, like give me Dope Boy from, <laughs> like give me I give me give me Ice Cube as Dope Boy, like yo, Damn. give me that. Wow. Give me that. Give me that as a skin Damn, where I can just yeah. roll around and just, just like, like, let me do that. Damn. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, that would be fire. Are you going to buy it right away? If they got if they got shit like that, hell yeah. Right, right away? If they got shit like that, that is getting yeah. all of my money. Damn. Like, I kid you not. If they got dope shit like that. Breaking news. Yeah. <laughs> yo, it's going to get my money. If you got ill shit like that mm. where you're talking about, yo, yeah, like, we going to bring in all this shit. Like, yeah, like, yo, you could... Yo, we got the whole crew from fucking set it off in here now. Okay, like, all right, that's different. That's like, different yo, now. 
Now, see, I'm not even a gamer anymore, man. But, but but for something like that, if you give me Queen Latifah from Set It Off, whoo, it's going down. Damn, it's going down. I'm, by, I'm like, yo, like I, I'm putting this on, and I'm robbing the bank. I'm <laughs> robbing the bank. What? I, I just want to throw. I just want a little throwback where Debo just like snatches somebody's chain. Yo, imagine you know? being, yo, imagine getting a Debo skin. Oh my gosh, man! And, and it don't even got to be all hood shit, bro. At what point? If this isn't the most opportune time I've ever seen for you to give me a fucking Tony Montana skin, ooh, ooh. Yo, a Ooh. Tony Montana skin. Okay. We're, Scarface, give me that. All right. You're, you're really bringing up some ideas that, like, if this does go through, yo, that, I might have, that, 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 might, that might call for me to take a week out of work and just, yo, uh, like, yeah, yo, we got to really, really get into it. Like, we got, we got the shit. You know, we got like, the Tony Montana skin. Like, close the curtains, just be like, guys, I need to be. I just got. I gotta be alone I, for I a little. Need, bit. I need to be alone for a week. You I just know? need to be alone. Just for a like solid a whole week, week of gaming. Just a whole week. I'll, I'll I'll come back and, you know, say what's up to the world one, yeah. at another time. But it, for yeah. now, I just gotta go. Yeah, I just gotta go for a bit. But y'all have fun. <laughs> y'all y'all have fun out here though. All right. Uh, <laughs> I'm telling. What are we even talking about? Hey, uh, what are we even talking? What about, are we even man? talking about? Uh, switching gears again to some music. Ooh. Okay. Um, first topic is Roddy Rich. Uh, this moment will be brought to you by the, we are too soft for this generation. Yeah. So Roddy <laughs> Rich released a snippet of a song and, uh, the consensus of what the, the Twitters were saying was that the song was trash. That was being polite. That yeah, was being polite. That was being very it, polite. Yeah, the song was, yeah, it was just not, it was just not it. Uh, in response, Roddy Rich deleted all of his social media accounts. Well, really deactivated them because you can't ever yeah. delete social media because yeah. that's how they fucking get you. But he deactivated all of his social media because he was just like, yo, like, y'all are talking, y'all are, y'all are being mean. Being mean to me. Which... <laughs> I, I say it jokingly, but I do respect people's mental health. Yeah, but yeah. Damn, you're an artist. Yeah, you know, part of me, I I haven't been doing the uh, content creating as long as you have. Yes, but we did get one one person who commented on our stuff, and they were like, "Oh, your quality is kind of trash," and and I was like, "You know what? That's fair. Yeah, that's fair. You you know, I I didn't take it to heart." And after that, I, I reached out to the person. Yeah. I reached out to him. I was like, hey, you know, if, do you, if you have any ideas on how we can improve to make it better for you, let me know. Yeah. That following week, we still came out with something. And that person said the same thing again. But they were like, oh, the quality of your video wasn't good. But the content was really funny. We laughed at it. We yeah. enjoyed it. I was like, all right, thank you. That's it. End of story. The person ended up liking the page and following us. Done. I don't see... I don't know if you've ever had that experience where you've had people that have, like, talked to you personally or commented on stuff. Um, Every now and again, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And, I've definitely had it. But, but you have to have... You have to have some sort of tough skin. I mean, that's... I mean, you, that's... It's kind of what you do when you put yourself out there. When yeah. you Not when you put yourself out there, but when you put your art out there. But I mean, because you know? the thing is, too, like, as an artist, I mean, you could probably... You, probably feel this way about about your content like it is you it is so that's where it's like you are you're putting yourself out there and you you gotta but you have to realize like yeah like you can't take it personally no because not everybody's gonna like everything you do yeah and i think that's where despite the fact that like yes you're putting yourself into your art you have to realize that that's not how the world views it the world is talking about just your art not talking about you yeah exactly so um yeah now that roddy rich shit was trash um, I, I just I feel like you got to be tougher. You got to be tougher, especially because what we're doing right now is on a what I'm doing is on a very small scale. You're bigger than us, right, bro? But we're not. But we're not going out to. We're not flying out to Las Vegas or and, and shutting it down with a with a 
an art gallery or a food yeah. review. So, but he's got people that are going to pay their hard earned money to listen to him. So, if that's the case, if people are paying their money to hear you, yeah, and you're putting out snippets of what they could potentially pay, and it's trash, it's trash, bro. I mean, take that as advice. Well, I also think that like Roddy Rich. This is also, I think, the effect of like someone who uh, won too much too early. Okay. He, uh, from the standpoint of like he puts out like puts out the album, um, which was a great album. Uh, the song "The Box" ends up being number one. Yeah. Uh, every every feature that he's on is like guaranteed, like. Like Roddy Rich was the fucking cheat code mm. for like uh for like at least two years. Two years, Roddy Rich is the cheat code. Yeah. Like it was yo, Roddy Rich on uh DJ Mustard's album. It was Roddy Rich on Pop Smoke's uh posthumous release on the hit single, you know what I'm saying? And it's Roddy Rich on the hook. Like, you put Roddy Rich on your like, yo, Roddy Rich and the baby had like the fucking cheat coder song I've ever heard in my w- life. Would you say they had a hit? Yo, they yeah. <laughs> wow. Uh and it was again, I'm like, yo, like, this shit is going crazy. Like everything Roddy Rich yeah. touched was gold. So I can I know when you win in that much. You can't imagine you're even able to make trash. You haven't fallen. You haven't fallen. You haven't fallen. So he so he goes and puts out this snippet. He probably thinking, I'm going to put the snippet out, and they going to be nipping yeah. for it. Yeah. They going to be like, ooh, <laughs> when are you dropping this one? Yep. Rod. <laughs> When's this one coming, Rod? <laughs> Rod. <laughs> When's this one coming out, Mr. Rich? Mr. Rich. That's what I, he thought. I don't know which one was worse. That's what he thought was going to happen. The expectation that he thought it was going to be good or somebody saying that like, Mr. Rich. Drop it. <laughs> Drop it now, Mr. Rich. <laughs> and he and he puts the snippet out and they were just like, yo, you should have kept that you one to yourself. Yeah. You probably should have kept that one to yourself, you know, sir. But, but you know what he should have done? He should have taken that and be like, yo, criticism. Yeah, yeah, the internet is brutal when it comes to it, but take it. Take the criticism, right? And be like, all right, this is where I can get better. Because that's free criticism. It, it's better to take that criticism with just taking a snippet of it than to put all the money into that new album, it flop, and then your all your momentum is gone. Yeah. You know? Take that. Learn from that. You you stumbled. You didn't fall. You just stumbled a little. And for you to react like that, not a good look. No, not even a little bit. No, not even a little bit. And it'd be one thing if he was like, "Yeah, for my mental health and this." And this. No, you did that because they said your song. They was said trash. your music was bad. Yeah, yeah. You can't. You're not gonna survive like that because there will forever be that one person in a room of a hundred that will say, "I didn't like that." Yeah. Um. Absolutely. One person who will survive, though, is the baby. What a segue! Yes, <laughs> the baby will survive. Listen, the baby will always survive. All right, uh, that man got hands of steel. <laughs> yo, so the baby is out here going back to what he what does. we all going back to what he does. The king is back. The king is back. He never left. <laughs> the king is back, baby. Yo, rumble, the, young man, rumble. Yo, the baby. Like the fact that like the baby has been in more fights in the last like two years. He's been in more fights the last two years than Floyd Mayweather. Like, damn. yo, the baby's out here. Damn, yo, so, someone needs to sign him. Yo, the baby is out here brawling, and so, uh, for those of you who don't know, uh. The baby and uh, his baby mama, I baby guess, mama is the best way. To, that, yeah, is the best way to like refer to it. But Danny Lay, um, her brother, had been on social media for the longest time. He was talking, pretty much saying, "Yo, when I see you, yeah, woo woo woo, wah wah wah." Right. Um, 
and the baby was at a bowling alley. It looked like he was bowling alley in LA. It looked like he was shooting a video because I saw a lot Yo, of like camera listen, folks. Listen, you knew something was gonna go down because all these people were at the bowling alley. Not a single one of them were wearing bowling shoes. Not a and single were, one of them. And they were on the lanes. They're on the lanes in Jordans and Tim's, and they took this man Yo. out. So, <laughs> yeah, so uh, Danny Lay's brother appears at the bowling alley. Allegedly, he says, <laughs> he says, I went over there to talk to you like a man. Um, from what we gathered was he went there and he got up. There so was no talking. There was no talk. <laughs> and I'll be honest, too, I mean... I don't know that you can say the amount of things that you say online and expect to have words well, with someone. not to that, man. You've no. seen his actions. You know what he's about. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So he, um, so yeah, like his, Danny Lay's brother got laid out pretty man. bad. And uh, that, they did a 7-10 split on that man's face. Yo, yeah, it was bad. It was bad. I'll be, yo, the shit that got me about it. Um, a, this is what we expect from the baby. Yeah, right. But B, I felt like every because this happened. Uh, I think this was today, um, or yesterday. I can't. I get my I, days. Uh, yeah, but whenever it happened, I literally felt like every four hours there was a new angle released. Of this, of this assault. I'm, I'm telling you right of now. This attack. This needs to be in his next music video. Yo, <laughs> all of the different angles. It has like, to be in his music video. I, yo, every, like literally, I felt like every post I saw, it was a different angle of the exact same beatdown. Yo, and and the thing is too, and it wasn't like every angle was like kind of similar. It's like no, no. no, it was it was like. I feel like I was watching the movie Vantage Point, where it's just like, yo, we're going to show you a completely from, different from a angle. different angle. Like, yo, now it's it's the person who was <laughs> who was over here by the, by, 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 like, by the nacho stand there, like, lane yeah. seven. <laughs> it was, it was Sarah by the nacho stand, and then it was Kenneth over by the, by the lanes. Wait, 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 we have a birthday party in lane 27, and this is the footage from and it. And here's the footage from over there. But yeah, yo. it was, it was. You know it what? It, it, it's starting to get to me where it's starting to get to the point where the baby is just you. Not to say you look forward to it, but these are this is what you expect from him, right? Like if you if if there's a, a headline that says the baby, what's the first thing you're thinking of? Oh, he put hands and or feet on exactly. Someone. You're not thinking music, Yo. right? No. No, not on a headline. And, and he's kind of parlayed this into his music. Yeah. Bro, his music is like literally, because the thing is too, and I think that's where like the appeal to the baby's music comes into play. Because a lot of times I think when you're like the tough guy rapper, there's always the questions of just like, are you a tough guy? Because there are some dudes who you would listen to and you would know like, nah, this is a tough motherfucker. Yeah. The baby is proving this shit day oh, in oh, and gosh, day yeah. out. Yeah. Like, Listen, that man. That man puts a. If he puts in his next song, yo, I went to the supermarket and I hit somebody. I'm gonna be like, he did that shit. He did that. He <laughs> yeah, like, did that shit. <laughs> he did it. Like yo, and he does it. It seems like he does it right when you're not talking about him. Yeah, you know, it. it if this was a planned thing, like over the past two three years, if these were all planned, I'm sorry, bravo to his marketing team because they just know whenever he's not hot drop a uh, fight video yo yeah and and I don't, yeah it's like fuck he's like Kimbo Slice yeah it's pretty amazing and, and then it's like when he starts to die down drop a, drop drop a, drop a song with somebody so so they know of you a little bit and then the song starts to drop a little drop a fight video bam i will he, never understand why People don't just leave this man alone. I would not talk about him. That man could run right over my foot with his car. You know what I would say? I'm sorry. My I'd bad. Say, yeah, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. My listen, bad. Listen, listen. My bad. I shouldn't have listen. been there. Yeah. I shouldn't have been there. Dude. My foot was in the way. I apologize, sir. I should I shouldn't have been there, man. Carry I on. I and I, and then there. I'm rushing right to Twitter. Yeah. I'm saying, hey guys, I apologize for what I did. Yeah, yo, my, my, my foot bad. had no business being my, there. My bad, baby. Um, I didn't mean to do that. Uh, 
I, I love I love your music. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, nah. One, not, one love. One, Done. One love. One Done. Love. Done. One, yeah. I'm not starting with this man, man. Nah. No good comes from it. He's yeah. He's just he's way too active out here. He's like he like yeah like he a motherfucker who you could just tell he forget he rap. He's like, oh, I got money. I, nah, I, I forgot. I, he's like, I got money. I don't act I, like it. I'm gonna yo, beat your ass. And he got no. I'm going to whoop your ass. And he enjoys oh, it. You I, can yeah. tell he enjoys. They, remember, there was always that one kid in high school that was just getting to fights, right? Yeah. And you'd be like, yo, why is this kid getting to fight so much? He's a cool kid. You know, he seems to get along with everybody. But then you're like, mm, he likes fighting. He just likes fighting. Like, I'm going to stay away from him. Yeah. You know? Look- like, he looks at me funny. I'm looking up. Yeah. Just not, not I'm not starting with this dude. Yeah. That's the baby. Yeah. Just like, don't start with him. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not dealing with it. No. Nah, it's good. just not worth it, man. No. Nah, nah. Um, so, I'm not going to lie. I, I had to, I made like adjustments on the fly of the topics. Cause I'm like, yo, we going to go for a minute. <laughs> And I can't do a two-hour pod, yo. Ain't yeah. I don't have it in me. I don't have it in me to do a two-hour pod for this one. I'm like, nah, nah, nah. Uh, but what I did want to get into, uh, on the topic of fighting, UFC 271 mm. is upon us. Mm-hmm. Um, and I'm really only wanted to talk about like the two... Uh, the, the two main cards? Yeah, the two main events, which is uh, Derek Lewis versus uh, Tai Tuivasa, which yeah. honestly, I'm gonna say it right now. That might be fight. Of, that might end up being fight of the year. You think so, fam? It's gonna be too much. Like, I do not see that fight coming to like a decision. Like, that's gonna be a knockout, and I just don't know who's gonna get knocked out. So, I'm not. I'm not crazy big into UFC. Yeah, but, but the main. The main. Yeah, players. yeah, yeah. I, I, I'm, you know, I, 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 I can know. give you the rundown of these two motherfuckers. Like, please do. So, both of these guys are literally just both dudes. Uh, Derek Lewis, for those of you who don't know, he holds the record for most knockouts in UFC history. Mm. So all he does is just knock motherfuckers out. Tai Tuivasa is on that same plane. I just knock people out at heavyweight, and then he uh does a he like after every knockout. He shotguns a beer out of a shoe. It's a thing. It's pretty amazing. This guy's, All right. This he, he's got my vote. Yeah, he's no, got my it's, vote. It's, like, that's crazy. Yo, it's pretty outstanding to watch. <laughs> it is. I will say, it is. I will show you a video now, of now, it. Now, where does he get the shoe from? It's someone in the crowd always throws him a beer and a shoe. He pours the beer into the shoe. Into the shoe. And he and does a he... shoe That's what they call it. To right. Shui every that, after every fight, that, I is, show you. that is amazing. It's pretty that phenomenal. Is amazing. And again, it's worth the price of admission every time. <laughs> every time, right? All right. So they so they they pretty much match both of these dudes up. Yeah. At heavyweight, they're like, yeah, like y'all gonna fight each other. Because who's all, more experienced? Uh, Derek Lewis, I would all say, right. is more experienced. Um, I think Tai Tuivasa, he's still more so like. He, like Derek Lewis is the one that's higher, more higher rank. He was just in the like interim championship fight. Like, definitely, um, Tai Tuivasa has, has like less experience. But again, both of their shit is just knockouts, and it's one of those fights where they both a they like if there's no animosity, there's no beef. Like they literally view the idea of knocking a motherfucker out like sport. So like even at the press Man. conference, even at the press conference, like Tai Tuivasa was like, "Yo, you fucking wild ass Australian dude." It's like. This fight is gonna end in a knockout. Oh, so he knows. Yeah, like yo, this fight's gonna end in a knockout. Either I'm going to take his head off or he's going to take off mine. That's how this is going to go. <laughs> like, Gosh, like that, yo, that's just if that doesn't get you excited for this shit, man. Yeah, like they literally go into this shit like yo, oh, like, yo. Like, like listen, man, like I'm like yo, we we not here for three rounds. Like we trying to end this shit in two, in two, in one or two is really what we here for. We're so, not here for so pretty much, run. if you go to the bathroom, you might miss. Yeah, nah. Like this is one. Like nah, I'm sitting down. I ain't going nowhere. I'm watching this shit start to finish. This part of the podcast has been brought to you by Depends. Yeah, man. For the person who yeah. doesn't want to miss anything of the UFC. Yeah. Back to you, Izzy. Yo, so I, uh, I think uh, Derek Lewis. That's it. Um, 
just from like, I mean, yo, the dude is just a fucking animal. I think I really do think he ends up getting it. Last fight he lost, I feel like he's like out for redemption. He's in his hometown, like oh, that there. Yeah, he's in his hometown of Houston. He actually like the last fight that he had it was for the the interim heavyweight championship against Zero Gone in Houston. He lost. So it's like, Ooh, yeah. So he got the motivation. So he got the motivation of like, yo, man, you ain't finna like motherfuckers ain't finna embarrass me in my hometown yeah. two times in a row. Like, fuck out of here. Like, I'm I'm watching this dude. Like, I'm oh, trying man. to come out here and wax. Wax this motherfucker. So that's what I think is gonna happen there. Um I highly recommend like, yeah, like that's gonna be one to watch. Like, don't don't go nowhere for that one, man. I'm okay. telling you. I'm All telling right. you. Um and then uh Israel Adesanya versus Robert Whitaker. All right, so those are two names I'm familiar with. Yes, um, Robert Whitaker was he was the, four, the the champion that Adesanya took the undisputed middleweight title yep. from. Uh, this is their second fight. Uh, Adesanya won the first fight by a TKO. I think he wins this one too. So, I know Adesanya and Kamaru. Kamaru, yep. Kamaru. Are they both in the same the one's in the lesser division, right? They're um so uh Kamaru Usman is in a lower weight class. All right. Yeah, yeah. Um they won't ever fight. Oh, okay. Uh what's your view on this fight though between these two guys? So, I mean, I think Adesanya is like he's so meticulous in just the way that he approaches all all this shit. I really think that like uh, Whitaker has probably gotten better, which is why I think the fight will probably end by decision and not by TKO like it did the first time around. Mm-hmm. By, uh, like, you know, just Whitaker having, like, improved. But, like, I just think, yeah, like, Adesanya is just, like, he's just running through it. He's literally, like, I think he is uh, the current generation. He's, like, the current version of Anderson Spider Silva. Of just, like, yo, like, I'm going to come out here and I'm, like, I'm really just, mm-hmm. like, so the Take, picking picking y'all apart. So the upset factor would be like through the roof on this one. Yeah, I think so. So then, all right. So if you had to say out of this fight and the other fight, which one has the more likely upset scenario? Uh, as in like the like Derek Lewis and yeah, Tatsui Vasa versus yeah. this one. Honestly, the Derek so the Derek Lewis and Tui Vasa one because it's. My my expectation is that they're gonna go out there and just start throwing fucking bombs at each other. So it's like it can really go either way mm. because it's just two people who like are going for broke. Whereas um that can go in either direction. Mm. But I think once you start getting into the game of like strategy and you're doing all like it ends up just coming down to like, no, like who's better then? Because the person who's better. It's not even gonna let you get the chance yeah. to even think you can possibly get me because it's like nah, like that's just not gonna happen. Mm. So I think that's where like Adesanya comes into it with this mindset of just like yo, like I'm not even gonna let you get the chance to even try and catch me in some sort of uh predicament. Yeah. Like nah, fam, it's just not happening. Like better luck next time. All right, okay. So my my final part to this is. Why the hell are these things so damn late? Yo, I. <laughs> why the hell are these things so damn? That that might be the biggest reason why I can't, why I <laughs> fully can't get into UFC. All right. Yeah. It's like the main event with like people like, oh, let's get together and watch. I'm like, yeah, yeah, sure. What time does it start? They're like, oh, eleven. I'm like, oh, yeah, that's no problem. It's like all the other fights ahead of it. All the other fights yeah. ahead of it. And the, and what kills me, right, is that, like, you might have seven fights before the main event. Yeah. Five out of those seven fights might only go, like, three minutes each. Yeah. Yet we are still waiting for this main event at, like, 1.30 in the yes. morning here. And I get it. And they, they do it all on the West Coast for the most part. Yeah. Oh, down south. Yeah. But, but damn, man, one thirty Eastern time. Yeah, it's bad. It's bad, bro. It's bad. This might be the biggest reason why I don't, oh, I can't get into UFC is the timing. Yeah. Like the because the sport itself is incredible. Oh, of course. But man, but yeah, it's man, tough. that time. Yeah, now nah, it's telling hard. me it's hard. It's hard. Um. Yeah, now nah, it's definitely hard. But 
I mean, I'll, I'll I'll be tuned in. I definitely got to watch it. I'll, I'll I'll watch the highlights. I will watch the highlights, man. Like, um, yeah, no, you got to watch it. Also, I will say, and just like a dope, a really dope note, because you had mentioned Kamaru Usman. Um, because a lot of times when you run through your division enough times, you try like you go up a weight class to try yeah. to get like the the double title. Uh, Kamaru Usman has gone on record saying he will not do that. So, which one was the one that said that they were going to take a um a break for uh they want not they don't want a union so much as they want oh, a higher pay rate because Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're talking about um Francis Ngannou. Okay, all right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Francis that, Ngannou. That that I I read up on him a little yeah, yeah, yeah. bit. I'm Francis like, yo, Ngannou. this dude this dude knows what he's talking about. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. This, yeah. Right? Well, and, it's cuz I mean, you there's so much money in boxing, but I mean, it's just such a different uh, it's a whole different thing. I can go down that rabbit hole, but yeah, Francis Ngannou is the current heavyweight champion, and he's like, he's like, I'll run out my contract. Mm. Fuck y'all. And like, and I, I respect that because yeah. he's saying he wants he wants higher pay for the lower fighters. Yeah, he, which he is want- really just saying something because you got to think how many of these lower fighters probably aren't never gonna get to that part no. to that point where he's well, at. Yeah, I mean, he yeah, he just he wants a better revenue split, but I mean, and that's fair. That's, yeah, that's yeah, super fair, super fair. Um, yeah, so like, yeah, him will say like that's three, like it's three, three UFC champions are from Africa, and that's why, and that's why, um, Kamaru Usman will not go up because he's the pound for pound best fighter in in the UFC right now. He won't go up in weight class to fight. To like fight Adesanya for that belt mm. because he's like, uh, he's like, nah, like he's like, it's like it's better for Africa to have two champions with two belts than it is to have one champion with two belts. So I don't need to go Damn. up. That's unity, right? There. Yeah, he's like, That's I don't, unity. I don't, I don't. I love to, to see that. I love yeah, to see he's that. He's like, that. That's what he's like. I don't need to go up in weight class to take that. I'm, <laughs> To, to to even try that's and take solid. that like that's nah. solid though like I'm I'm good like solidarity too yo because again it's like yo like because at that point it's like yeah like we doing this for Africa like fuck all this like it ain't about my legacy mm. it's about it's about Africa so like yeah. yeah man Black History Month Black History Month baby yeah Black man. History baby shout out to Kamara Uzman all right yeah I can't yeah I cannot get over the fact that you have an African name and I didn't know like yo you really putting it out there huh? yeah I'm not I'm not saying it though. I'll I'll find it. You can try. All right. Oh, we'll try. see. We'll see. You don't see me show up at your church. <laughs> <laughs> Keep playing with me. Keep playing with me, bro. Keep playing with me. I will show up. You but... show up. They're gonna give you an African name before yeah, they tell man. you mine. <laughs> hey man, I'll take it. Listen, I'll it's, gonna, it, it's gonna be years before you find that yeah, one out. Man. Years. Yeah. Keep playing with me, man. <laughs> like I won't be Cootie Rodriguez. <laughs> <laughs> Right. You don't want that. Yeah, come on, man. You're gonna be jumping from team to team. Yeah, yeah. Man. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, man, that's my tribe. That's your tribe? Yeah. Yo. Jumping tri- from tribe to tribe. Yeah, man. That's the coo- that's the that's the way of the cootie tribe. <laughs> what are you talking about? Huh? Damn man. Huh? What y'all say? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Don't roll that clip. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, oh no. my gosh. Oh, uh, man. Uh, brother, I uh, appreciate having you, man. Man, I appreciate you letting me, letting me come down here one more time, man. Oh, it's awesome. I, I this told was you, great. Hey, I told you the last time. I was like, yo, man, I definitely got to do it again. You know what I'm saying? This like, was great. It, it needed to happen again. Glad you was able to pull up again. Um, I very much, it was funny, I was having this conversation with a friend of mine. Um, I'm very much someone who's just appreciative of people's time. Um, because I'm appreciative. I, I value my own time. Yeah. I value how I spend my time. So I never take for granted when someone is willing to take two or three hours of their time to come here and do this. And you know I was saying? on time. Let, let the record Yo, show fam. that a minority man showed up nah, on was, time. Nah, I'm telling you, you are the uncootie. Uh, <laughs> you are like, yeah. You are I, like I refuse to be that person, man. Yeah. This man said eight o'clock. I was at his doorstep at seven fifty-five. Yo, yeah, man. This dude is. You are like one hundred percent. Like you're the reverse cootie. Is that? 
Still African, though. Still African. Still African. Um, yeah, man, you are really mad African. That's yeah, crazy. We I talk, really we'll, am. We'll talk about that. Yeah, yeah. One day. yeah. One day. One, one day we'll really one, break one, that we'll, down. We'll, we'll really go into the, the Camara legacy. Yeah, okay. yeah. We'll, we'll the Camara Chronicles. That. <laughs> uh, with that being said, I will take us away. Some ships float. Some ships sink. But the best ships are friendships. And to those ships, we, we drink. drink. Cheers, brother. We got a good clink. There Ooh, we go. there it is. Yes. Happy Valentine's Day, y'all. Happy Valentine's Day. Kill that. Kill that. Kill that good Ooh, stuff. All right. 83. Ooh. Yes. Ooh. Goes down smooth. Yeah, that's that good stuff. Well, that's that good stuff. Uh, with that being said, make sure y'all come back next week. See who I have here with me next week. As always, peace, love, all the above. Check out through the Chew Review. Check out through the Chew Review. We out. We out. Peace. Love y'all.